All right, well, more fool me. Um, it has been a long week and a long day, so instead of hit pause, I hit stop. That means on to video number two. So I just can't do the first one over again and, and make it a big, long video. So anyway, um, anything you need from the previous video, just go back and, and work it. This is really kind of where the rubber meets the road. And it might be a little bit confusing, but let's just go for it and see how things go. All right, so we're starting out with arc sine negative a half. What we're doing is we're going to take this ratio and determine what angle that we need from that. And turn back to blue. So remember that the range is restricted from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. Okay, that is your output restrictions. And what arc sine negative a half really stands for is we want sine of some angle to give us negative one half. Now you might, if you're really good with your unit circle, go, oh yeah, fine, right, I know this. This is gonna be um, five pi over six or 11 pi over six, but you would be wrong, all right? Because these restrictions right here are gonna create an issue where we can't answer the way that I just said. So let's kind of examine this geometrically, and we're really dealing with this situation here. Here's your negative, um, hang on, let me get one too many lines there. Here's your negative pi over two up to positive pi over two, all right? We're only allowed answers within this range of values. So if you're saying, you know, five, uh, seven pi um, over, two, over six, that's well beyond pi over two. And if you're trying to say 11 pi over six, that's way beyond it too. You can't go beyond pi over two, but you do have a negative one half and it'll be right here. And we're just gonna have to calculate a negative angle. And that negative angle will be negative pi over six, all right? So you cannot use the seven pi over six, you can't use the 11 pi over six, you can't go above pi over two, you can't go below negative pi over two, all right? That's where the thing gets tricky. So um, if you need to pause a minute and replay that and reprocess, but it's all based on what we sh saw in the graphs where we had to cut out a little piece of that sine curve that was snaking up the y-axis in order to create a function. And when we did that, these are going to restrict your answer to something in between these two values for sine, all right? So pause if you need to, otherwise we have another one right here. And so we're talking about negative pi over two to pi over two again, and that's for our output. And again, if you wanna just see this as something you're used to seeing, you can say we're interested in sine of some angle, which will produce radical three over two as a ratio. Okay, and that's kind of like, what angle is that? So let's go back and place this where we had it just like before. And remember, negative pi over two and positive pi over two, that's where our answers are, nowhere else, all right? Well, radical three over two is right here, and that's at pi over three, and that's that angle right there. So your answer is pi over three. That one was easy, because you can get to it without traveling outside of this or going in a negative angle direction. Okay, so again, take it slow, pause where you need to, and you know, I'm just gonna move on. So this next one, again, you know, and you really don't have to mark all this stuff, it's just a teaching tool for me, but if you need to do it, then do it. So again, we're looking for negative pi over two to pi over two and we're interested in sine of some angle, and it's the angle we have to figure out, giving us a ratio of two. 
And maybe you picked up on this or maybe you didn't. But what is the most that sine can be, right? Can it go all the way up to two? Um, yeah, it, no, it's not possible. You cannot get an angle. So basically what you can say is there is no angle which produces a sine ratio equal to 2 because it maxes out at 1. So your answer here, and this is the way I want you to answer it, this is not possible. Don't say undefined. That means something else. All right? Um, yeah, you don't want to say that. Okay? So we're going to move on uh, to cosine, and this is cosine inverse. And remember that cosine inverse has a different restriction on the range or the output. This is going to give you allowable values from zero to pi for angles, all right? And what we're saying here is we want, oops, wrong one. We're off of sine now. We want cosine of some angle to produce a ratio of square root of two over two. And just for a geometric look at this, now we're looking at like the top of the unit circle from zero to pi. And doesn't positive root two over two occur at pi over four, right? So your answer here is pi over four. Not so bad. Um, Next one, cosine inverse of negative uh, one. That's what we, our uh, ratio, and we want the angle that was produced for it. Remember, we are going from zero to pi for cosine. And again, this is just saying cosine of some angle that we don't know is going to produce a ratio of negative one. And the geometry is the upper half of the unit circle. Sorry, I don't draw too well. And isn't that going to be negative 1 right here at pi because that is negative 1 comma 0? So this will be at pi. All right, so again, pause if I'm going too fast or if you need time to think. Okay, um, so arc tan 0. Um, that's a third thing, and we were back to um, the same restrictions basically, basically as sine, so negative pi over two to pi over two. So we're talking about the geometry, just like it we did for sine, right? So from negative pi over two to pi over two. And we're just saying we want tangent of some angle, call it theta, equals zero. Well, if you remember, we're dealing with y over x. This point right here has an ordered pair of one, zero. And this is y over x. Zero over one is zero. So this will occur at zero radians, right? Because in between here, pi, pi over two and negative pi over two is zero, okay? All right, um, the last one here is tangent again. So our outputs, for angles have to be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, just like the one before it. And we're just asking the question, the tangent of what angle will produce a tangent ratio of negative 1? All right. So this one may be a little tricky. Um, we're looking at from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And we want that to be negative one. Now you might think, oh yeah, right, I know that. Um, you could say maybe that theta is three pi over four. Or you might think, huh, it could be seven pi over four. But you would be wrong with both of these because those are beyond pi over two. You're not allowed. But you can still find a negative one tangent right here. Isn't that going to be at negative pi over four? All right, so that'll place you 
in between your allowable range and you're good to go. That's it, all right? Anything that rotates beyond it, even if it finds itself crawling back in, it doesn't matter. It's not really in that picture, it just looks that way. You over rotated and you're not between negative pi over two and pi over two. So it's gonna be either some positive angle up to pi over two or some negative angle down to negative pi over two. All right, this time I'm going to work my pause magic and hopefully not shut the thing off. And I'm going to pull out the, the very last page. All right, back already. Um, all right, this is just using your calculator and you're supposed to go ahead and put your calculator in uh, radian mode and we're just going to let the calculator give us some of these non-unit circle value um, answers. So when you look at this, you want um, tangent inverse of negative 8.45 and you just go ahead and put that in your calculator and I will put up the answer for you. It's negative 1.453. Remember, at least to three decimal places. So you can pause and put it in there and make sure that's right. And after your pause or not pause, you're gonna try sine inverse of this ratio, which, you know, should work and that should give you an angle and the angle for this one is 0.247 so 0.247 you want to keep going with the decimals it's actually 21 it's up to you if you want to so make sure you can get that to work if it's not working this way and you're putting it in like that check that you're not in degree mode because that's going to mess things up now for this one there's no telling what you're going to get. You could get non-real answer. You could get just a funny looking output. Because keep in mind that what this is really saying is we want cosine of some angle to produce a ratio of two. And isn't two just not possible when um, you're trying to find an angle to produce that? Because the biggest the ratio that you can get is going to be one. So anything above that won't be possible. So this is another one of your NPs. Okay? So um, I hope that this will get you up to speed. And um, I'm sorry about the two videos. Um, it's just one of those things. So I'm going to bid you, bid you a fond farewell and a good weekend. And I will see you on Monday.